coming up on today's episode of Airborne Unlimited. Bombardier C-Series goes transatlantic. FAI signs agreement with Freedom Drum Sports. NASA tests new engine controller for first SLS flight. Hello, I'm Laura Hudson. It's March 30th and this is Airborne Unlimited. Bombardier Commercial Aircraft has confirmed that a C-Series aircraft with a representative payload successfully flew nonstop from London City Airport to John F. Kennedy Airport in New York City. The direct intercontinental flight followed a series of successful flights to demonstrate the C-Series 100 aircraft's capabilities for operations to and from LCY, including steep approach landing and short runway performance. Rob Dewar, Vice President of the C-Series Aircraft Program, said, quote, The C-Series Aircraft Program achieved another significant milestone with the completion of the demonstration tests at LCY. The C-Series is the only commercial aircraft that was specifically designed for operations at LCY, and we are very proud of its performance. The aircraft smoothly performed all eight takeoffs and landings during a two-day period as planned. Transport Canada and EASA certifications for steep approach operations with the CS-100 aircraft are expected in the second quarter of 2017. Bombardier has extensive experience operating at LCY Airport with various aircraft types, including the Q-400 turboprop aircraft as well as the Challenger 650 aircraft and Global 5000 and Global 6000 business jets. Swiss is expected to be the first airline to offer service with a C-Series to and from LCY later this year. The FAI and Freedom Drone Sports have signed a memorandum of understanding, signaling a new step in the development of drone racing. The two organizations have committed to working together to help develop drone racing in a responsible and safe way. That includes licensing pilots, developing rules of racing, certification of drones, track design, social responsibility, gender equality, and accredited training of all parties, including officials. Fritz Brink, president of the FAI, said, quote, I am very happy to welcome our new collaboration with Freedom Drone Sports. Drone racing is a fast developing new air sports discipline, and the FAI is very pleased to be working together with new partners in this way. I look forward to seeing the first races and competitions and watching the sport develop. The FAI is responsible for sanctioning air sports competition internationally. As part of the memorandum, the FAI will undertake necessary actions to recognize Freedom Class Giant Drone Sports. Freedom Drone Sports will help to develop a structured environment while the FAI will sanction competitions in the new class. Both will focus on ultimately developing an FAI-sanctioned World Championship Series, including the presence of Freedom Drone Sports at the first FAI International Drone Conference and Expo. After the break, NASA conducts a critical SLS engine test. The dream is real. A truly affordable personal jet aircraft. The Subsonics Personal Jet Kit is priced at only $42,000. Kit Plus Engine is still under $100K. Add instruments, upholstery, and paint, and you're flying. It's time to put your money where your bucket list is. Learn more at sonicsaircraft.com. Redbird is quickly becoming the industry standard for flight training. Since Redbird introduced its revolutionary FMX in 2007, colleges, universities, and flight training operations around the world have integrated Redbird products into their curriculum. It's time to discover what Redbird can do for you. Join the migration. The Bristel Light Sport Aircraft is what you are looking for. The Bristel is wider than a Cirrus, faster than a Skyhawk, offers more storage than a Husky, and comes standard with Garmin Avionics. So what are you waiting for? Visit Bristel.com to find out how you can get into a Bristel today. Welcome back. If you would like to be a supporter of Airborne Unlimited, send an email to jim at aero-news.net. NASA marked a critical milestone March 23rd with a test of the first RS-25 engine controller that will be used on the first flight of the new space launch system, the world's most powerful rocket. The new controller or brain has the electronics that operate the engine and communicate with the SLS vehicle. Engine controller unit 2 was installed on RS-25 development engine number 0528 and test fired for 500 seconds on the A1 test stand at Stennis Space Center. 
Once test data is certified, the engine controller will be removed and installed on one of our four flight engines that will help power the first integrated flight of SLS and the Orion spacecraft. Stennis Director Rick Gelbrecht said, quote, This an important and exciting step in our return to deep space missions. With every test of flight hardware, we get closer and closer to launching humans deeper into space than we ever have traveled before. The RS-25 engines that will help power the SLS vehicle on its first flights are former Space Shuttle main engines. Four engines will fire simultaneously to provide 2 million pounds of thrust and operate in conjunction with a pair of solid rocket boosters. It's Thursday, which means that it's time for an Aero Community Update, highlighting news and information about the incredible people and organizations that populate the Airborne Partnership Initiative behind Airborne Unlimited. The second FAA UAS Symposium, the first to feature the Association for Unmanned Vehicle Systems International as a pivotal partner, is now history. In addition to some well-crafted sessions, panels, and discussions, the event boasted an SRO crowd that often required the hosting facility to add chairs to many of the more popular events. ANN scored an interview with FAA Administrator Michael Huerta, who started the event off with some interesting pronouncements. That all the work heretofore conducted to get the unmanned community to where it is right now was the easy stuff and then added some stats that provided a strong dose of reality to the assemblage. That there were now over 770,000 drone registrations, along with some 37,000 drone pilots on the FAA registry. A number of proposals and initiatives were discussed over the course of the three-day event, including the formation of a new aviation rulemaking committee that is intended to create standards for remotely identifying and tracking unmanned aircraft during operations. ANN's Jim Campbell and Bree Cross also interviewed the FAA's Earl Lawrence and AUVSI's Brian Wynn during the highly active event. Look for those interviews and other programming over the next few days and weeks. After these messages, an air show proves to be good business. There's a difference between charting a steady course and pushing for the ceiling. And for nearly a century, Hartzell Propeller has been defining that difference. It's in our passion for engineering and research and our dedication to testing the limits of performance. We are built on honor. We are Hartzell Propeller. Explore No Limits Flying in the FAA Certified Sea Ray Amphibious LSA. One of the top three best-selling LSAs in the U.S., Progressive Aerodyne Sea Ray comes equipped with a Rotax engine and exhibits extraordinary handling on land, water, and in the air. Check it out at www.searay.com. Welcome back. With so much news coming out of the aviation industry, we're summarizing some other interesting stories in a brief segment we call Around the Patch. The China Lake Air Show provided an economic boost for the local economy, according to economic and tourism leaders in the region. The area's largest hotels reported being at full occupancy, and local restaurants were packed during the two-day run of the show, March 18th through 19th. The U.S. Navy, which hosted and ran the air show, said that more than 50,000 people came through the gates at NWAS China Lake. A senior researcher at Japan's National Institute of Advanced Industrial Science and Technology has created a way that could allow tiny drones to pollinate plants. The researcher is Iajiro Miyako, who has invented gel that can be used to collect pollen from plants and deposit it on other plants using a micro drone. The goal of the project is not to replace bees, but to give farmers an alternative way to complement natural pollination. The U.S. Department of Transportation's Bureau of Transportation Statistics has released a report showing U.S. airlines carried an all-time high number of passengers in 2016, 823 million system-wide, 719 million domestic, and 103.9 million international, surpassing the previous highs reached in 2015. Lockheed Martin will expand production for components of the F-35 Lightning II with a new facility in Johnstown, Pennsylvania, including more than 40 new jobs by the end of 2018. 
They are in the process of finalizing plans to lease and equip an additional facility to accommodate this new work. In 1957, the Soviet Union launched the first space satellite Sputnik 1. It was the same year that Morrison Knudsen Corporation launched out on its own adventure and 60 years later, the company that would be later known as Western Aircraft is still flying. Western Aircraft began as the corporate flight department for the Morrison Knudsen Corporation, headquartered in Boise, Idaho. Well, that's it for today's trip around the patch. Now let's move on to the rest of the news. We're really beginning to like the LA Times, especially after their editorial board urged the city of Santa Monica to not be a slumlord, even with the airport's eventual closure. City manager Rick Cole told the paper that the city will not starve the airport, but will not feed the airport. The editorial board says that the city should not stand in the way of tenants who would like to invest in and grow their businesses. The board says that dilapidated hangars should be repaired and rented to people who have been on waiting lists, and not to non-aviation interests. The only fuel vendor will likely charge as much as $8 per gallon for fuel which is nearly double what is charged at other airports. Cole said that the city will soon begin to offer self-service fuel, and the board says that the city should be held to that promise. The editorial also states that there is no reason to shorten the runway at KSMO, stating that while smaller aircraft can use a shorter runway, they shouldn't have to. The LA Times said that the pilots and the FAA should assure that the city lives up to its side of the bargain. Well, that's our program for today. Remember that Airborne Unlimited is streamed daily Monday through Friday with additional breaking news bulletins for important stories that fall outside of our normal deadlines. If you're watching us on YouTube, please subscribe and do check us out on Facebook and Twitter. Get comprehensive, real-time, 24-7 coverage of the latest aviation and aerospace stories anytime at aero-news.net. See you tomorrow.